so what is up? It is me here. Welcome back to another video. And today's video, I'm gonna be talking about um something very interesting. Something I don't really talk about in my channel. Uh and I know the five hour live stream thing. Uh I was just getting so sick and tired of it. I'm sorry. I'm just not doing it. But uh I'll do live streams. Don't worry. Despite, you know, I have other things I have to do. Um, we're going to be talking about the top five. We're going to rank worst to best every team in the NFL. Now, I know, I know, I know, um, there are not a lot of teams that are, well, terrible this season. Which makes this very interesting. Which makes the teams that suck... Well, suck. <laughs> you know? So, it makes the teams that do suck just absolutely just suck. So, yeah. We're actually going to do a tier list. I actually figured out a way to do it on PlayStation, which is uh, very interesting, and uh, I'll talk to you guys uh, about that. So, if I... Oh, whoops. <laughs> so, if I flip it around... By the way, sorry about the camera. But, um... You could see the, uh... Tier list, right? Could see. Unfortunately, it's backwards, so I can't flip that up. So the Arizona Cardinals. Can I? What is going on? I'm so confused. It's not letting me do what I want to do. How do, you, how do I hold it? I didn't meant to do that. I also didn't meant to do that. Okay, well... I guess that's not going to work. <laughs> also, times you have to go to different plants. So, so we're going to start off, I guess, with the Arizona Cardinals. Now, Arizona, as I think we all could pretty much tell, is one of the interesting teams this year. They have the expansion of DeAndre Hopkins. They have the... Like, there were so many things that they have, which just makes this team interesting. And I want to say this personally. I don't think Arizona's going to play that good this year. As much as I hate Arizona, which I do, by the way, I will give them a solid 6, 11, 7, and 10 record. Just Hopkins being suspended and Marquise Brown being arrested, it's just like, no, you're 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 not gonna be a very good team this year. I mean, I understand you still have Hopkins for all the other twelve games and you also have Zach Ertz, but like that's it. Ronda Moore, AJ Green, like what are they gonna do? Now we're gonna start off we're also gonna then talk about the 49ers. Now, this team, without a doubt, is playoff contention. But the question is, is if Trey Lance is going to be the starter. We saw some cool things in practice, but we don't really know if he's going to be that number three overall pick. The also biggest issue with this, you know, thing is that they spent a lot of draft capital just to get it. Like, seriously. They used 
what? They got, I think, three first-round picks. I think even a third-round pick. And, like, a fifth-round pick as well. They used a lot of draft capital just to get this guy. And make him, like, you know... Well, maybe not the worst quarterback out of the entire starting group. But definitely not the best. Is going to be very unfortunate for the team. Because if... Let's say, for example... You mightily struggle this hard, it's going to suck. I'm just saying. And that's why I'm going to give this team 11-6. I think with the run game, I still think they're easily playoff contenders. But no matter what, like I think they're probably playoff contenders. If, and that's a big if, is they stay healthy. Now we're on to the Seattle Seahawks. I don't know why they get criticized so bad. I mean, without a doubt, I think they go, like, double-digit losses at least. But they don't, like... They're not as bad as a lot of people think. You see, the QB controversy, yes. It is uh, very interesting, and easily none of them are going to be the starter next year if they decide to go with a quarterback. But, there are still a lot of things to look really nicely. They have three good running backs... Even if, if they stay healthy. And Rashawn Penny, Chris Carson, and Kenneth Walker III, who is expected to be the best running back out of the class. With a better O line than Charles Cross, this is definitely going to be a more fluid offense. Is Are they going to pass the ball a lot? No. They might actually run the ball more than they did last year, just because now they don't have a quarterback. The defense. You know, they made upgrades. They got one of the Chargers pass rushers. They got Bafa Ayoe. So, and maybe Kobe Bryant and Tywin Rowland, as we've seen with Richard Sherman before, could end up panning out as actual bet good corner potential. But again, I think they get a 7-10. and 10. I don't think they're going to go to the playoffs. I mean, it really is. I mean... We have seen like teams before go with terrible quarterbacks and yet still make it to the playoffs with like the Broncos after the year of Super Bowl 50, but like there's not a good chance of this team going to go far in the playoffs because it's just their quarterback plays going to be off. Now we got the Super Bowl champs in LA. LA has, I think, a top five of the most uh, hardest schedules in the league, which that's not going to make it easy. But here's the thing. They also lost some players in free agency and trades as well from Robert Woods. But you still have Michael Stafford, Cooper Cup, Cam Akers, Aaron Donald, and Jalen Ramsey. Those are like the key pieces to their Super Bowl. They also signed Allen Robertson and, and Bobby Wagner. So they're going to have a pretty disgusting front seven with Bobby Wagner and Aaron Donald. In it. But with a run first offense for 49ers and Seahawks, the Rams can easily win both of those games. With the introduction of Bobby Wagner, of course. So, do I think the Rams will go back to the Super Bowl? I, I mean, it's going to be a little interesting. Because there are two other teams that are Super Bowl contenders. Actually, maybe a little bit more than that. But, again, it's a pretty weak NFC. Compare that to the AFC for sure. But I don't think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the NFC for sure. But for me personally, I think they're going to go 12-5. and five. Now, with the NFC North, we're going to be talking about the Chicago Bears. This, and again, this is my opinion, I think this might be the team that's going to be a runners for the one, number one overall pick. I understand. They got a quarterback of Justin Fields. Justin Fields might end up being a good quarterback when they actually have a freaking, uh, at least an okay of an offensive glory. And actually will protect over, like, two seconds. I understand they did sign Alex Leatherwood and Trey Cannell Harry during the offseason, but they didn't really address the offense, did they, during the draft? Matter of fact, they also made their defense worse with the trade of Aaron Donald. We don't even know if Robert Woods, I mean Robert Quinn, is going to make that disgusting um, season like last season. So, to me personally, I think they're going to go 2-15. and 15. 
They're going to at least get two wins this season, but, like, not a lot, though, Salem's. Now you got the Detroit Lions next. This is another underrated team. Like, I mean, again, it will come down to will the rookies play good and stuff, but either way, this team is still not the worst Lions team, which, again... We have seen a lot of worser ones, so I guess that's not really a compliment. But again, Lions are interesting this year, because now they got a good draft, and a very interesting um, offense going. They did sign DJ Chark during the offseason, so like, they had a lot of weapons to work with. And also that beast offensive line, which Panay Sewell is now going to be in the sophomore, so... That will be interesting. I think they're going to play significantly better than they did last season. I think they're going to get, like, another again, maybe another 6-11, and 7-10. and 10 record. Now you got the Minnesota Vikings. This team is very tough to rank. Because, on the other hand, you have a team that were two wins away from making it to the playoffs. And on the other hand, you have an Aaron Rodgers division who at least once against Detroit and also some other teams. They signed the Zarya Smith, which, again, I don't even... If he stays healthy, he won't be bad. But look at last season. He barely played last season. And yet, Packers didn't really need him. Lewis Seen and Andrew Booth could end up being stuck corners, but... The question is, are they really going to be good players, though? That's a big in that uh, question that we have yet to see answered. So I say they also get a 7-10 and 10 record, and they're not going to be far away from making it third number one. Now, Green Bay. Green Bay is like, a lot of people are probably going to say, especially non pack fans, no matter if, like Bears, Lions, or, pack, or Vikings, they're going to say, Oh, they don't have a wide receiver anymore. They don't have Devontae Adams. They're going to suck this season. And the Vikings will win the division. Well, I don't think you should think twice about that. You see, Packers have addressed the receiving position with Neuronio Dobbs, Christian Watson, and Sammy Watkins during the all season. Do you think they should have made some other moves as well in free agency with the receiver position? Absolutely. Should they maybe trade it like Jalen Rager or you know, someone else? Absolutely. They should have maybe addressed a little bit more in that position than just actually just drafting and signing a guy who might not even stay healthy. But again, if he stays healthy, he's not a bad receiver. But again, if he stays healthy. Because like currently, I think the number one receiver on that team is Sammy Watkins. Which is not a great player, by the way. So I'm a little interested to see how that's going to go. Now we're on to the NFC South. We're going to start off with Carolina. Carolina is an interesting team. It's like their team might make it to the playoffs, or a team that's literally just going to suck so bad and Matt Rule's going to get fired. Here's the thing. I think no matter what the season is, I think they should fire Matt Rule. I mean, I'm not the only one here, but I think Matt Roll is not a terrible quarter. I mean, head coach. Especially, like, look at the defense. Look what they did on defense. Well, he may not add at Brian Burns. At least he consistently still made him become a superstar. He also introduced the Jaminity Chin. And also Derek Brown. He also introduced the J.C. Homer, which we have yet to see a lot of potential out of him just because he was injured for a lot of the portion of the season. And if Matt Corral or Baker Mayfield pan out, I think this could be easily a very good team for years to come. Now we're on to the Atlanta Falcons. This is probably the worst, one of the worst teams in the NFC. They are easily for one of the hot by pick, for sure. This team is just not that good. Like, seriously, this is probably one of the worst teams in the NFL, and I think a lot of people could agree on that portion. Like, Jake London and Kyle Pitts, yeah, sure, those guys will be pretty good pan-out players, but, like, seriously, you got not really such good defense outside of A.J. Terrell. 
So, like, you just need to work on trying to up your roster. Quarterback, I think they're definitely going to go with with our first-round pick this year because I don't think they're going to have any trust in Desmond Ritter or Marcus Mariota getting it down. Unless they get, like, a superstar quarterback or something, I guess. But again, this is going to be one of the worst things this season, and I'll give them a solid 3-13 and record. And now also Carolina, I give, like, a 6-11. and Now we got New Orleans Saints. A lot of people overrate, uh, I mean, underrate uh, New Orleans Saints. I mean, they're in the playoffs for teams, I mean, for people. But it's so surprising to see that the, um... They don't talk about that much. Like, seriously. The Saints have easily the best secondary in the NFC. And I'm pretty sure everyone can agree on that portion. And a pretty good offense. Here's the thing. They have four quarterbacks to work with. And they didn't have a single good receiver on that receiving roster. Now they have Jarvis Landry. Maybe a healthy Michael Thomas. And Chris Olave. So, yeah, I think it's safe to say that this is easily a good playoff team. Oh, wait, they lost to Aaron Armstead. They have Trevor Panning. Okay, they're fine. I think they're easily going to be a solid 10-7 and seven record team. Now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think they're overrated. They're not the over... Like, they're not the most overrated team. It's just like, their O-line sucks. Tom Brady missed a month of practice, pretty much. Russell Gage Jr. is not an upgrade to Chris Godwin for some portion of the season. Like, and will this team stay healthy, too? That's interesting, which is why I think this team will for sure... Well, I mean, they won't make it to the playoffs. It's Tom Brady, for Pete's sakes, but, like, they lost Bruce Arians. Like, I'm just kind of thinking this team is not... Maybe even going to hit double-digit wins this season. I mean, they're going to go 11-6, and six, but again, I just don't see this team having a very great season like they did last season. Now we're on to the weakest, maybe, division in the NFC East. We're starting off with the New York Giants. This is also another team that easily can get the top five pick. When I was looking at, like, Chad Sports, and I don't know how this team made it, but this team is a piece of crap. Daniel Jones is not the starter. How many times do we have to say this? The fact that they're getting uh, like at least even a, like a third opportunity is ridiculous. I understand he doesn't have a great O-line and the receivers have not stayed healthy, but like, I'm not, like enough excuses, man. Like this season, I really will expect no excuses. Andrew Thomas, if he had the same good year like last year, and Evan Neal, if he could play really good as the O-lineman, they're going to, like, he's going to get a lot of protection there. So there should be no excuses for him this year. The defense should get significantly better, though, with Kayvon Thibodeau on the field, but again, they're not going to play that good this year because also the cousin James Bradbury. They're just, and even with the, like, they have to go against the Eagles twice a year, you have to go against the Cowboys twice a year. They're not going to have a really good, simple record team. I think they're going to go up easily 4-13 and 13 this season. Now, Washington. Same thing, but at least they have a better quarterback. Like, again, they had such a terrible O-line. Well, I mean, they were ranked one of the best. Now they lost Brandon Sheriff. It's not going to be as good. They did upgrade the receiving core with the Han Dotson. But will that be enough, though? And we don't even know if the defense is going to be that good like it was two years ago. And that defense kind of looks like a piece of crap now. Not going to lie. So I would say, safe to say, they go with a 6-11 and 11 record. They are just not a great team right now. Now we're on to the AFC West. We're going to start off with the Oakland Raiders. Again, I say this, but again, I could definitely be wrong with this. I think the Oakland Raiders are the worst team in the AFC West. And that's not a bad thing to say. Because the AFC West is one of the hardest divisions in the NFL. So, that's not a bad thing. Like, honestly, I could say this personally. They might actually be able to win the AFC South if they were there. 
but they aren't. So, yeah. Las Vegas Raiders are going to easily have a good season outside of the division rival games. But they're not going to win the division. And I think a lot of people can agree with that. So I'll give them a solid 8-9. and nine, Barely miss out with a winning record. Now you got the next team on the list. The Denver Broncos. Now you're like, why are you... Now, the Russell Wilson trade... I was thinking about it a little bit more during the season. Is Russell Wilson going to recover from a finger injury? No, that's another thing I actually wondered. Did he recover normally from the finger injury? So, I think I'm going to have a little bit of an issue for that regardment. Which might actually make them lose a little bit amount of games. Maybe for the first half, maybe even second half of the season. But... I think Russell Wilson should be just fine. I don't think he's going to be as good as he was in Seattle with that broken finger, of course. But, I mean, it could be better. Who knows? But again, they also lost in Patrick, well, with the Tory ACL. Uh, they, they, they did a lot of good stuff in the offseason, but, like, I don't really... Like, they have... They weren't, like, as explosive as, as the other three teams. Which why I will give them a 9-8 and eight record. Now you got the LA Chargers. Trading for Khalil Mack, signing GAC was actually must need, and also signing Jesse as of just day. Drafting Zion Johnson was also a very nice move because he was kind of like Elgin Jenkins of Hackers. They could pretty much move him wherever you want him. And now with the bat out of the way, this could easily be one of the best teams in the league. It sucks though, again, they're in one of the worst divisions in the league to be in, like, the AFC West. So, I think it's safe to say they're going to go, like, 11-6, or 10-7, something like that. Now, Kansas City Chiefs, they actually got better. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, no, they're not, because they lost Tyreek Kill. Shut up. They signed Miles Mount Scantling, Sky, drafted Sky Moore, and signed Juju Smith Easter. I think that's safe to say is way better than that. And they already have Travis Kelsey. So I think it's safe to say, yeah, that's a good one. And the old one as well is going to get better too with, you know, sophomore of Kareem Hump and Trey Smith. So, yeah. And the defense should maybe get better with, you know, Trey McDuffie. I'm not giving so much hope to the draw cut off. It's no offense. But, yeah, I still think it's safe to say they get 11-6 and six or 12-5. Now, AFC North, we're going to talk about Pittsburgh Steelers. Without a doubt, their quarterback position is a bit inconsistent, but their defense might look really good this year. Now, I think we're going to see it down here, TJ Watt, which is okay, because he literally, literally tied for the record of the most sacks that season. So, that's not a bad thing at all, if, unless... It's a really bad one. But, yeah, I think their offense is going to be good still. Like, all around, I think they're going to get it maybe a, a 7 to 10, 9, 8 record. Like, it's like, if one of the quarterbacks could play just better than, than he was last season, uh, I think this team could get up a winning record, but they just suck. I don't think they're going to get a winning record. Then you got to play the Browns. Uh, I hate the Browns. Like, why did you win all in for Deshaun Watson? You play him a lot of money. You traded so much draft capital just to get him. And it, it, it's just an awful trade in general. I don't think it makes any sense, the fact that they actually get to, like, Move around the crap. And easily, they're not a playoff team because Deshaun Watson is literally suspended for 11 games. So, uh, yeah. That's interesting. Jacoby just says, sort of, I just think they're going to go like 6-11. Six and, six and 11. Just, they're not going to be better than the Steelers, I think, this season with Jacoby. Now, they got the Baltimore Ravens. They sucked last season, but it was because of injuries. If, if they didn't have an injured team, they would probably be
beaten the Steelers in the playoffs. And, a matter of fact, I think the Bengals wouldn't even been the division leaders that year. Now, again, they made so much introducement, but here's a bit of a question mark for me. Will the receiving core be good? Now you're going to be like, okay. Like, seriously, when you think about it, their best wide receiver outside of Mark Andrews, by the way, is Rashawn Bateman. We barely saw what his talent was, and now he's the number one receiver and Marquise Brown is gone. That is going to be a bit of a question mark for me. And again, if the entire team stays healthy is another question mark, and we don't even know if that's going to happen. So that's why I'm going to just give them a solid maybe 10-7 and seven record, because I think 100%. They're definitely making it the playoffs with so much interest in to this team. Now with the Cincinnati Bengals, the ASC champs of the year, so I think maybe Baltimore may, but, you know, maybe would have been the ASC champs if they didn't have any moves. Back to the point. Cincinnati Bengals are arguably probably a very good team. Again, if it was a fluke, I would say it's solid with a 7-10 record. But I don't think it's just a fluke. So that's why I'm going to give them a 11 and 6 record. I'm just trying to make this video a little bit faster, by the way. So I'm just saying that real quick. Now we got the ASC South, also probably one of the weaker divisions in the AFC. Well, probably the weakest actually in the AFC. You got the tenant. Actually, no, let's not start with Tennessee. Or let's start off with the Houston Texans. Again, I think they're a bit underrated, but like they're not getting more than, like, six wins this season. This team is still, again, a piece of trash. But you still have two games against Jacksonville, which they swept the Jacksonville Jaguars last season. They won it, like, like, here's the thing. They don't have just a terrible roster anymore. Because they went and upgraded the secondary, which I thought was a must need and move. by the way. Um, I think Houston is just going to be a team that is going to be a team that sucks, but also could have wins here. And there. I mean, after all, we did expect the Detroit to just absolute suck last season, and look what happened. They made it number two. Now we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. 100% they're not getting number one, but they could easily end up with a top ten pick. Now you're like, wait, what? Well, Trevor Lawrence, he's Trevor Lawrence. This is like pretty much maybe one of his last chances of to be the starting quarterback here. Like, I was thinking 100% he might be like an Andrew Luck. Like, you know, he's good in some cases, but then he's not good in some cases. I hate when they assume in that, like, Oh, he had a bad season, but you know, all of these people had a bad first season. And that means he's... Stop comparing it to Hall of Famers. It's so confusing, and it just does not make any sense. Like, seriously. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, look at that tongue of Obeloa. Like, he didn't really have a great rookie year, and yet he didn't have the great sophomore year either. So... Just stop. Just stop already with this nonsense of stupidness. It's so stupid. I hate it. But again, I think they're going to get like a 5 and 12, maybe 6 and 11 record. Just, they're not going to go have at least, they're going to have at least double digit losses this season. Then you got Indianapolis Colts. Now, the Colts are playoff contenders. But, like, here's the thing. There are so many other teams that are better in the AFC. Let me just, you know, say some examples. All teams in the AFC West. Ravens, Ravens, Steelers, and Bengals. The Titans. The Bills, the Patriots, the Dolphins. There are eight teams in the division, in that conference, that are all playoff contenders. And two of them are going to miss it. And Colts can easily be one of them. 
I don't want to say that. I love the introducement of Matt Ryan. It's just like, is Matt Ryan going to play good? Because actually, according to his stats, he has been worser, worser, and worser. But he's still performing good numbers, no offense. Now with a better O-line, number one, and also Michael Pittman Jr. and Jonathan Taylor, I think this could be easily an all a good year. They had seven Pro Bowls last year. I think this could easily be a nine and eight record team. Or ten and seven. Then you got Tennessee. A lot of people underrate the Tennessee Titans. Remember how many times they lived like remember, they won a lot of games without Derrick Henry. I understand they're not Devontae Foreman anymore, but still. I think this team could be white. I think this team could be, you know, still good. Are they going to win the number one seed? Absolutely not. There are, like, there are even still questions if they're going to win the division or not this year. So, I don't think so. I think they might be number four or three if they win the, play the division. But don't be too surprised if this team ends up going, like, 11 and 6 and up and 5. is as the prediction as I expect it to be. But more of 11 and 6. Now we got the New York Jets. Jets! They're a good team on paper. It's just like... If they just weren't in the, like, ASC. If they were in the NSC, I think they could easily maybe not even have double-digit losses this year. But here's the thing. They're in the ASC. They're also in an ASC East where every team is pretty much a playoff contender. So... I think it's safe to say they go get a 5-12 or record. But again, I think their future could be pretty bright. Now, with the Miami Dolphins, I think they're going to go 9 and 8. Like, they have introduced so many things, but yet I don't think they might even make it to the playoffs. I mean, kind of like what they did every year, you know. They kind of try to... They don't really fix the O-line. I don't think Tyron Armstead and Connor Williams are going to help the O-line. Like, seriously. I mean... We don't even know if Terrence Armstead is the age of 32 or 31. Might actually have a good year. Connor Williams is decent. He's not good, but he's decent. That's an issue. And the right side of the old line is hot trash. So yeah, I don't think the old line is still addressed it quite yet. And they didn't address that during the draft as well. So yeah, I think it's safe to say this is not going to look like a pretty good team as a lot of people expect it to be. Then you got the New England Patriots. I, like, they just didn't got better. Like, Cole Strange is a bit of a questionable of a pick. Fyquan Fortin, you know, he could be decent or something. But, again, I don't really see this team going that far. I think they might go with an 8-9 record. No offense, though. I think Matt Jones could get better this year. It's just like, they're not going to have a lot of successfulness with... 